I'm Sarah Backhouse for Hub Culture. I'm joined by Fahad Al Atia of the Qatar National Food Security Program. Welcome, Fahad. Thank you. Tell me a bit about the food program. Well, it started in 2008. Uh, the origins were when His Highness the heir apparent uh, wanted to uh, understand the, the magnitude of the problem. Uh, and he investigated the matter and found out that Qatar is extremely vulnerable. Uh, he decided then to start this food security program and launch this food security initiative in order to tackle the issue and find a, a, a lasting solution. So, and the reason, where, where did it all originate? It originated from the 2008 food crisis that had hit the world and equally have hit us, countries that are uh, generally uh, looked at as donor states and, and, and have uh, some sort of uh, affluence. But that affluence did not uh, in any way um, helped us. Uh, we were helpless because we couldn't re-import most of our food. Um, so the, the, the action was to solve the problem, uh, eradicate it. Uh, and the way we looked at it in Qatar, which is different to where most people have, have, have gone, is to solve the problem domestically. Now that comes with a lot of challenges. The biggest challenge is a country that is regarded as the driest spot on earth. How are you going to overcome the issue of water? And if you, if you, and how are you going to sort of uh, start uh, vegetation in a in a place where it's the most hostile? Uh, so these are big, big challenges for us to look at. We went and we we, we started looking at. What, what, what if, do we have any uh, other source of water? How do we actually live in this country then, if there is no water to begin with? And the way we do it now uh, is that we desalinate a lot of water and we use fossil fuel. Now that, that is not the best way, but that's the only way that we can live in a country like Qatar. Now in order to tackle an issue like agriculture, which consumes five to seven times more water than we do, means that we need five to seven times more water than what has actually been produced today. Only to cover and manage to find, only to cover and be, make available water to the agricultural industry. Now that is a very, very daunting task. Well, how do we do it? We looked at, is there any aquifers that we can explore? We realized that our aquifers are pretty much depleted because the farmers for the past 30 years have been extracting from it and the replenishment rate is a quarter of what we extract. And the math makes themselves, you know, it's clearly that it's not gonna be sustainable. So we eliminated that option. Are there any other options? Rain, rivers, we don't have none of these. So the whole, it, we were almost forced to consider desalination as the only option that we have. But we, we were left with a very big question, is if we were to consider desalination, what form of energy are we going to be using? Now, it may be very obvious that a country like Qatar would go and expo exploit its natural resources, gas and oil that it has in abundance in order to burn it and, and get the necessary energy for desalination, but instead we went the opposite direction. We looked at, do we have a competitive advantage other than oil and gas? And the answer is yes. It is the sun, the very sun that made our country very dry to begin with. Um, we, have, we have surveys of satellite imaging about the solar ray. And guess what? It's the highest in the world, which makes all the economics. Now, is there enough power with the solar load to fuel desalinization? Because that is a very energy intensive process. Absolutely. And we, we made the calculation. We've made that we all, all we need is about 1800 megawatts to power, mm -hmm. to provide enough power for desalination plant of 3 million cubic meters of water that then we will distribute to all the farmers. Now, what we're going to tell the farmers to do is to stop using the aquifers because our water reserve today is standing at two days. Mm. So we don't have food and we don't have water and we're extremely vulnerable to any shock. But how do we treat that? We treated it by saying, okay, we can go down the route of desalination, but it has to be on sustainable principles. And if we were to need any energy for the desalination plant, it has to come from a renewable source. And the only, and, and the best renewable source that we have in Qatar is the sun. And that's what we did, it's very simple. 
But when we go downstream beyond desalination, when we distribute the water to farmers, we want to make sure that the farmers are adopting 21st century methodologies in agricultural production. We have spent a lot of money in generating that water, but we want to make sure that their activities are as very, as very efficient too. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of challenges and uh, well done for, challenge, for, for facing them head on and uh, op renew, opting for renewable energies, which is obviously a big part of it. So we've run out of time, unfortunately, but thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.